Welcome to Bible 360, 1 Peter. Other than Jesus, Peter is the most common character in the Gospels, a leader of the apostles. He often nailed it saying things like, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. He also regularly stuck his foot in his mouth, such as when he tried to rebuke Jesus for talking about suffering. Peter has clearly come a long way because one of the main themes of 1 Peter is suffering and enduring. Peter is writing to Christians scattered throughout Asia Minor. He wants them to hold on to their hope in Christ while living holy lives as their witness to the gospel. Christ was committed to us, ransoming us not only from sin and death, but also from the futile attitude that humanity often adopts. We have been born again into a new and everlasting life through the power of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. This baptism into Christ's death and resurrection saves us, much like God saved Noah's family from the doomed world he floated above. Our baptism makes us members of a new world and community, one marked by things God has always called for, honesty, integrity, and peace. Although Peter's listeners were enduring trials, these trials act like the heat that welds or solders us into Christ, our foundation. The hope we have in Christ is rock solid, and our faith is more precious and enduring even than gold refined by fire. Peter describes our salvation as beautiful and enduring like gemstones or diamonds. Both the suffering of Christ and his glory were interwoven throughout the Old Testament. Peter demonstrates this by regularly referencing Old Testament verses and themes. And a huge part, for instance, of Israel's faith was to be holy in order to show the nations that Yahweh was holy. We too are called to be holy. Much like Israel was radically different in diet and custom, we are to be radically different in our attitudes living no longer according to our lusts, but according to the love of God. We no longer live for the fading glory of this world, but for the inexpressible glory found only in Christ. However, being holy is more meaningful than avoiding certain foods or objects, as Peter learned firsthand on several occasions. Peter warns us rather to avoid unholy attitudes and desires, such as rage, lust, hypocrisy, and gossip. Peter calls Jesus the living stone. It's the best of both worlds, unbreakable on one hand and yet alive. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected Isaiah described. Isaiah spoke of how God would destroy Jerusalem and yet God's city would somehow live on. Israel rejected Jesus, much as the world sometimes rejected Israel or as Israel had rejected the prophets. And nevertheless, God sustained them. Jesus, the rejected stone, would live on even after being attacked and killed. And so we are like the Jews, exiles in this world, but we trust that God shall lead us back to our home. Even Christians in Asia Minor are part of this new city of God because they've been chosen. Like the Israelites, they were simply called by God's grace and mercy, and that's how they became members of God's people. The next section is where Peter starts to describe exactly how they should interact with one another and outsiders of the world. Peter's advice is not to waste time fighting battles that don't really matter. They are members of a new nation, so rebelling against Rome would simply waste their energy. Who really cares what country they're part of? They should, though, honor the emperor because Christ is the supreme ruler. Even if their bosses or slave masters are cruel or unfair, they should nevertheless be good subjects or workers. Why? Because their good conduct will be an example of faithfulness, and the world needs more of that. More importantly than advancing our plans or fighting for some nation's plans is simply to be faithful to our heavenly ruler no matter the circumstances. This is especially true because suffering itself can be a powerful way to testify to God's kingdom and our eternal hope. Peter wants people to be able to trust Christians, even untrustworthy people, because God is faithful and trustworthy even to sinners. Now, no one enjoys suffering, so if you suffer willingly, people notice. This may be the most effective evangelism strategy of all. We suffer willingly, remaining faithful to Christ because the blood of Christ and his promises are more valuable than silver or gold. Look at Christ, who suffered even though he was good and innocent. He didn't fight back or return hatred for hatred. Rather, he entrusted himself to his Father. This is how he convinced and redeemed us by dying unjustly as we were persecuting and killing him. So we too suffer willingly because that is how we might save our enemies and accusers. Peter encourages husbands to love their wives. Their strength and power should not be tools to use in negotiation or fights with their wives, but resources which they should use to bless and honor their wives. Likewise, Peter tells wives their value does not come from their external appearance, but with things more valuable in God's sight, gentleness and peace, which 
testify more truly to how God instructs and wishes all his people, male and female alike, to conduct themselves. What a dramatic change in Peter who once told Jesus not to talk about suffering. As Christians, like those in Asia Minor suffer, we ask, why won't Jesus rescue us from our problems? Peter says he will, but not yet. Because suffering is exactly how God works through Christ and Christians. Suffering is an opportunity to witness. We should rejoice when we suffer unjustly for Christ because people are associating us with Jesus. What's more, God is purifying and strengthening our faith. Peter also assures us we are not alone in our troubles. The response of faith is to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand so that he may exalt us in due time, casting our cares upon him because he cares for us. Peter knows suffering happens to Christians. However, God uses this suffering to share the good news and ultimately to create a glorious and good world where Christ reigns and we joyfully give him glory.